Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the KH-47 hypersonic Kinzhal missile from the Russian military. Please remember to like and subscribe. Now let's get right into it. Fact 1. Air launched. This hypersonic cruise missile is actually only launched from the air. It's very interesting because you would think that these kind of missiles could be launched anywhere, from land or submarine base, etc. But actually, it requires aircrafts of the Russian Air Force, such as the MiG-31K, specifically designed to launch the Kinzhal. There are also other aircrafts that are more like the bombers. For example, the Tu-22M-3M bomber that could load up to four missiles, whereas the MiG-31 can only do one. Another type of uh, bomber would be the Tu-160 that could also launch four different missiles at one given time. These bombers are lar much larger, so they can carry more payload than the MiG-31. And eventually, the Su-57 will be adapted to launch the Kinzhal as well, and is likely only be able to carry one because the missile is so massive. And so now you can see that this missile really requires aircrafts to make it fly. Alright, let's get to the next fact. Fact 2. Nuclear capable. This missile, as you saw how large it was, is mostly conventional warhead tipped. However, the missile is readily adaptable to nuclear warheads. The tip of the payload of the Kinzhal missile could easily fit a low yield kiloton level nuclear bomb and at the incredible speed of Mach 10, hurl directly toward its target and detonate a nuclear warhead. I think it's very ominous to think about the Kinzhal as a nuclear weapon and being that it could be launched from an aircraft, what if the aircraft goes undetected deep into enemy territory and launches this missile? Once it's launched, it's probably very difficult to intercept because it's traveling at Mach 10 and the powerful detonation of a nuclear weapon could potentially decapitate an enemy so quickly in the beginning of a war. And so the Kinzhal, with a nuclear capability, must not be taken lightly, because if the Russians decided to arm the Kinzhal with a nuclear warhead, all our hope is lost. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 3, first used in 2022. This missile is a very new, modern war technology. The first time the Russian military ever used this missile was actually in the Russian and Ukraine War of 2022. This was the very first time the Kinzhal ever saw combat action. It's very rare these days to see brand new weapons being launched in a conflict. Of course there are brand new drones being used because drones are relatively new technology. But in terms of missiles and rockets, most of the systems that's currently being used have been developed since the 1980s, 90s or even 70s. However, the Kinzhal is a very new comer and new addition to the Russian military. They really only started developing it in around 2017. And again, as I mentioned, 2022 is the very first time it actually saw combat use, which means it made its debut in 2022. And despite being unveiled by Vladimir Putin before 2022, the world's never seen such a missile being used before. And so I think when the first time the hypersonic missile was launched against Ukraine, it was probably quite a shocker for not just Ukraine, but for the rest of the world. Because up to that point in time, no other nation has ever used a hypersonic missile in combat in real life conflict situations. They've all been testing and research purposes. For the Russians to reach this first milestone, I think it's pretty incredible. All right, let's get into the next fact. Fact 4. Stationary and Ships The KH-47 Kinzhal, because it travels at Mach 10, it is really designed to hit stationary objects such as land buildings, military bases, etc. and ships, because ships can't really travel that fast. And so, for something that's traveling at Mach 10 as the Kinzhal missile, something like a ship is going to appear stationary. The Kinzhal absolutely cannot hit moving targets such as an airplane, or combat vehicles such as tanks because it is very difficult to course adjust this missile during its travel. They travel at Mach 10, 
So any kind of course adjustment is going to make a huge impact relatively short amount of time. And so for it to hit small objects, such as an aircraft or a truck, is very challenging. For something like the size of a battleship, cruiser, frigate, or land-based targets which are stationary and very they're large, then it's very straightforward because these things aren't going to be moving at a fast speed and because their surface area is much larger. A bigger margin of error could be tolerated and minor course adjustments shouldn't make a huge impact for these missiles. Alright, let's get into the next and final fact. Flies in the stratosphere. As I mentioned in the first section, this missile must be launched from the aircraft. The aircraft must first attain a really high altitude close to the stratosphere before being launched. And therefore, it is considered that the aircraft is actually the first stage of the missile. The missile requires a high altitude launch simply because of the speed that it travels. For it to be reaching Mach 10, there cannot be too much air. And as you know, the air in our atmosphere gets thinner and thinner as you go up in altitude. At a low altitude, the air is too dense, and so for something traveling at Mach 10, the dense air will offer so much resistance, making it difficult to travel at high speeds. However, in the stratosphere, when the air is super thin, there are no resistance to the missile as it flies through the air. And so, this missile requires a specific environment to operate in for it to reach the desired Mach 10 speed. Of course, when it's coming down from stratosphere into the target, it's helped with the gravity acceleration. And so even though there's more and more dense air coming down, because of the acceleration of gravity, the missile could still travel super fast. All right, let's simplify the video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.